Now we got them here in the back. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we are going to install navigational lights on our kayak to be Coast Guard approved using the Yak Power Little Bullet LEDs. Besides being Coast Guard approved, I want to be safe when I'm on the water, especially when I launch early in the morning because I like to get out early, get to my spot, and beat the heat, especially in these hot summer months. So you want to be seen by other boaters. You know, we're just a kayak, maybe cruising along, doing you know a couple miles per hour, or just sitting there fishing along a bank, and you got these bass boats and other boats flying by you, and they do not see you. The other day, I was actually going out of a little inlet, coming around the corner, and I saw the boat coming in. He was coming back to the ramp, and he was a commercial fisherman going after bait. And he came around the corner, and I had uh, navigational lights on my Hobie and my yak attack flag you know with the anchor light turned on and it kind of caught him off guard he's like oh you know i didn't see you there bo is what he said to me but you know with the lights on he actually did see me i saw him coming so i was gonna be out of the way for him anyway but it did catch him off guard because you know those blind corners but as soon as he came around that corner he did see me so having navigational lights or some kind of lights you know especially like an anchor light on your kayak will make you be seen uh from miles away which is a good thing these jack power um navigational lights come with basically a plug-and-play setup so you just need a battery source they have any kind of different cables you need to plug into your battery source and you can literally just plug everything in for this to work even yak power has a switch bank where you can have a, a bunch of different things on this you know a lot of people actually take these bullet lights and stick them up in the uh, gunnels up here of their boats to have like courtesy lights when they go out in the morning the sea now me personally I've never had lights up in my gunnels of my boat except from like my bigger boats, you know, but being on the kayak, you know, my night vision works better when I don't have any lights on the kayak itself for me to see. You know, my eyes adjust to the light from either the moonlight or just that early sun coming up. I see better with no lights on the kayak itself. I just want my navigational light. So I'm not opting for the uh, switches from Yak Power because I'm only gonna, only lights I'm gonna have on this kayak is my navigational lights and I have my, uh, you know, my anchor light from Yak Attack itself. So I didn't need, you know, the option to have five, six, seven different switches. So being I have electrical background, I'm just adding my own little low voltage switch. Now this switch I had laying around is from, you know, me putting lights on my truck. And this one's actually, you can actually light it up too by bringing, uh, you know, your power to it and also a uh, negative to it. So you need a positive negative, but I don't need it to be lit up. To me, just that little light on this ain't gonna draw much, but I don't need to have it lit up for me to know because sitting back here, I'm gonna put the switch over next to my seat. I'm gonna know and I'm gonna see if these are on or off. I mean, literally my navigational lights only need to be on for maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half max. So, you know, I thought about making it even simpler and just wiring it straight to the battery and just literally plugging my battery in, going out. And when I get back to the end of the day, I unplug it. But I was like, you know what? There's no reason to have them on all day. You know, the longer these run, eventually they will, you know, burn out. So I was like, you know what? I will add a switch to it, but I'm gonna do it my way and just keep it still, but still keep it simple. I only need one, one switch to operate these lights and that's all I need. So let's get into the install on this new canoe. It's pretty straightforward. Only thing I do miss about my Hobie or other uh, kayaks out there is having access to the front. They have a little plate here on the new canoe, but I miss having like an access port where I could really reach in here. They give you a little bit of access here and you got to cut it out to get your hand up inside there anyway. So so. You can see they give you a little access plate here. I took the handle off to get more access to it. I took the screws off and I actually did drill, take a hole saw and drill some holes down here. But what I'm going to do, I think, is take a multi-tool and cut this whole area out here to get full access so I can get my hand completely in here because right now it's a little tight but I think once I get all this cut out here I'll be able to get my hand up in there so you can see on the back of these lights there's a little nut and you know the gasket so you gotta be able to tighten that nut up either with a pair of pliers or by hand so you do need to have access on the back side of this to you know tighten these nuts down on these lights to be able to get them to hold in place so like I said these plates behind these plates that uh, they give you to be able to bring out power you can see they are just covered up here they they want they need you or you need to cut out whatever you need for switches yourself in the hull of the boat i guess they figure they do it this way this way if anybody doesn't do any uh accessories on their kayak like the way we're doing uh you won't have any holes in your uh hull itself to get water even though there's a gasket on it 
I'm sure I'll still get a little bit of water getting behind this after I make a hole, but it's not going to be a lot to sink your boat. Let's get this cut out a little bit more here. So we got enough cut out here to get our hands. It's still going to be tough though, for sure, you know, with my bigger hands, but I took my uh, watch off and everything, but we're probably going to stick the navigational lights around here. So at least it's above the water line and not get that much water in behind the light but it's definitely going to be tough to reach back in there and get that nut you know in my opinion new canoes should do what they do here in the back you know you have the access port here in the back to be able to reach way up inside no problem they need to do that in the front a lot of people do the gear pods and that come up in this track here on these and do a lot of their stuff through the gear pod itself and drill holes in that and mount batteries but like I told you in previous videos, I probably will never do a gear pod and I don't think I want a gear pod. You know, I like the open deck floor space basically because it gives my son more room. Maybe in the future I will, but at that point, I'm really not gonna need the gear pod because I'm gonna have everything running through the boat. This little bit of access they give you here definitely could be bigger on the new canoe, but it's nothing we can't work through. It's just gonna make it difficult to get the lights on this. So these kits come green, red, I think blue and white. And in the kit, they give you two of each, you know, two of each color. So two green, you know, and I got a kit with two red so obviously I'm only going to use one green one red and it comes with a supply drill bit the right size hole to get these lights through and do your work which is nice this way there's no guesswork you know you just it comes with the bit that you need plug and play literally to their stuff it almost looks like a microphone jack and we're going to be using that but I'm going to be cutting the wire splicing in the switch and I'm going to show you how I do that it's still very simple but like I said you know Yak Power has a system on their website which I'll leave the link in the description below for all this stuff that you can go to and literally make this a plug and play system and just do to your battery source. Yak Power actually has, which I'm gonna be using, the Nakwa connection and it's made for their battery. So literally you just plug into the Nakwa battery and you don't have to do any splicing with that either and just literally plug in the battery and you're done. We're still doing it simple, but we're still making it a little bit more complicated than just your plug and play because like I said, I don't need you know five, six, seven switches. I just need one. And they do have a switch from uh, Yak Power that is uh, plug and play, but it's not recessed. It's kind of like a side mounted thing. Where you, I could have brought the wires through that plate and just screwed it to it, but uh, it doesn't look as nice as like a recessed switch just in that little black panel on the side of my seat. It does come with a nice washer. It comes with a nice gasket and it comes with a lock nut. So obviously you gotta take that lock nut all the way off and feed it through the hole. We're gonna drill the hole here shortly and we're gonna get these wires to the center uh, port here, send the snake back, and get these wires pulled to the so back. I'm just sticking my hand in there. It looks like the best access for us is gonna be right behind where the screws are for the handle. Obviously there's plastic underneath here to support this gusset for the screw for the handle. So we're gonna put our navigational lights pretty much right behind that screw, right up here, and it'll give us enough reach inside here to be able to put that lock nut on and be tight. So we're gonna put them right here. So you can see it's a very small hole. When you drill through, don't go flying through because you can actually come on the back side of your boat. So you just need to just get it in there, penetrate just a little bit and just go through really slow. Just go in a little bit so you don't come out the back side. So as far as the colors, your red goes on your port side, which is if you're facing you know, the front of your bow of your boat, the red goes on the left side. The green goes on the starboard side, which is when you're facing forward, it'll be on your right side. So red goes on the left side when you're facing from the stern to the bow of the boat. The left side is your red side and your right side from your stern to your bow is your green color light. So facing the boat, this will be your green on the left, red on the right. Facing forward from your stern and like in your seat facing forward, red goes on the left, green goes on the right. So these cords are 12 feet long. This boat's 12.6, so it actually works out okay. You know, if you needed to get a longer cable, they, they do have them. This is gonna be the hardest part, is getting this nut on this. So obviously the hole's long and you know, big enough to get everything through it. We're gonna pull the wire out here. Actually, almost screws in. 
So it looks like the thread's long enough. That's why there's probably a nut part on this. You actually can screw this in and then put the backing nut on it. Or maybe you don't need the backing nut. Maybe it's just for safety and that's why they give you that size hole. You know, I didn't really read any instructions. So I'm just looking. Yeah, we got plenty of room there. So we're gonna work this light in with a little bit of a wrench and we'll still stick the backing nut on there. But I would assume that threads, being that this is a plastic hole, the thread of this light seems like it's gonna screw in and this is just for backing. So maybe it's not as bad as I thought. So we're gonna just take a little adjustable and just lightly thread this in. Obviously the, the wire is gonna kind of twist too. So you wanna make sure it doesn't get too twisted as you do this. Just keep it kind of straight here. And as you tighten down, there's a gasket behind this that's gonna keep the water out. And once again, I wouldn't over tighten this. This way you don't break the, basically break the thread on the light. So you just need to snug that down. It doesn't have to be super tight. We're gonna try to get this uh, nut on there as well. So just work it through your cord in there. Work it down the wire and see if we can get our big paws up inside this little hole. So we were able to get our big paws in there and get that back, you know, that uh, backing nut on the light. Like I said, I don't think you really necessarily need it because as long as you don't over tighten these uh, lights into the plastic hole of the bolt of the boat, uh, you'll be fine. But we were able to get on there as just a safety. And then we're going to get these wires. We're going to send a snake up from the back of the boat to the front and tape these on and pull them to the back. So we're going to do the red one now. The main thing is just do not over tighten these and they'll thread into the boat very nice. So look how nice these look. So small, just a little red and a little green one. And it's so cool that this is a plug and play for, you know, most people who don't like to cut or splice wires, this whole system they came out with. But definitely new canoe needs to give, you know, the way boats are rigged today with lights, motors and everything else. I mean, they really need to give you a bigger access, access port here for sure. But we're able to this is the snake we're using and you can use probably like a stiffer piece of wire uh whatever they make small versions of these but this is what i have this is what we call a snake in the electrical field it has a little end on it we're going to send it up to the front grab those two wires tape it and pull it to this back hatch here on the new canoe so we're going to feed it through the hole here and it'll make its way to the front should be up there now and there you have it. It's sticking right here, you know, because this boat comes to a V, so it's easy to send that through and grab it. Now we're just going to tape the wires on and pull it back. No need a lot of tape, just enough to hold. So, like I was saying before about the plug and play, you can grab the Nakwa adapter, or they can, you know, any even if you use Dakota lithium, they have like a little uh, cable that uh, you know attaches to your battery terminals for your, like your Dakota lithiums or any other battery. Then you plug this in to that. I would tape all these connections up or do heat shrink. And you literally just plug these in and they have a gasket on them and it's a pretty tight fit. And then if you don't want to switch, you can make this install as simple as we just did it and connect it to your battery source, which once again, we're using the Nakwa. That's it. Now we got power to our front lights. Let's go check them out. So you can see how intense this light is. It's This is during the day. Look how super bright these are. So you got your red and you got your green. But we're going to add a switch into this install. But like I said, if you want to keep it simple as what we just did, you can leave these on all day or during the, you know, after a little bit, you can go to the shore, get to the back. 
Now, if your battery's underneath your seat, you could probably just, you know, unplug it from underneath your seat, but being in, ours is so far behind us, we'd have to go to the shore to turn these off. So that's why we're gonna add a switch to these, just so they don't burn out so fast and last longer. That is a very, very cool, simple, clean looking install right there. You can see this Nakua uh, adapter itself does come with a fuse holder and comes with a supplied fuse. It's kind of tight, I'm just gonna leave it on there. But what we're gonna do, this is where it gets a little, not complicated, but this gets where it gets into a little bit of electrical. We're actually gonna cut this wire and run a wire up and a wire back to just break the positive of the line with the switch. So it's gonna go up to the switch, come back from the switch and continue onward after our battery connection. So we're gonna get into that part next, which is gonna require us to get a wire from here up to that side panel. We're gonna drill a hole and mount our switch. So what we need to do now is we're gonna make a hole in this with a hole saw, you know, bigger than the actual switch. And then through the black plate itself, we'll make the appropriate size hole that this for this to snap in, but this gives a clearance for the wires and everything else behind it. So we're gonna drill that hole next. power had this pre-made cable with their jack on it and I actually had two like stake ons on it to plug onto like a smaller battery but it had a built-in fuse so what I did is I took that fuse off and took a crimp and just took that out and this is what we're gonna plug to our switch now you can see there's a black and a red you know when it comes to conductors don't worry about color it's just a conductor you got copper wire that's why I got this kit because, you know, for me to buy, you know, a 25 foot piece of copper wire, low voltage, marine grade, it would be a lot more than this little kit. So for me to get this and just cut the fuse off and use these stay cons that already have the insulated covers on them for the switch, it was worth it for me to get. I just cut the fuse out of this and this is what we're gonna use. But back to what I was saying, you know, these are just conductors. Don't worry about the black being black and the red being red doesn't mean this has to be on the positive doesn't mean this has to be on the negative these are just conductors so basically we're going to cut the wire back there we're going to send the positive up to the switch and we're going to send the positive back on the black to make our connection to just to break that power so that's all switches is you're breaking the power so we're going to just use this pre-made cable we're going to send the snake up to here again and get these wires pulled to the back to make our final connections now we're going to make our connections to the back of the switch like i said this switch has another terminal to bring up uh, a negative so this lights up but we're just going to plug this in and test it real quick to make sure the switch is in the right position whether you know because i want to be able to push it up like that to be on and that to be off just want to make sure we're in the right spot here so for our final connections this is the wire coming from the switch we're going to cut this end off and we're gonna basically splice it into the positive right before the fuse. So the fuse is after the switch and protects our lights. So we gotta cut the wire. So probably about right there. And then we're gonna take this wire, cut the, cut the ends off it. Separate it. Just watch your fingers, you don't cut yourself. Separate those wires. Like I said, don't worry about the colors, one being black, one being red. It's just conductors. Just think of it as conductors, not based on the color. So all we gotta do is send the power up, which will send it up on the red itself, and come back on the black and hit it to the fuse with some buck connectors. And I suggest putting some heat shrink on this just to help it with the water connections because you are going to get a little bit of water in your hole no matter how tight your seals are. So we're going to slide some heat shrink over these two before we make our connections. Now we're going to splice in our wires. Like I said, we're going to send the power up on the red.
and then back on the black. You know, if you if you have your own wiring, you know, your own wire laying around, you could just send two reds up if it makes you feel better. But like I said, it's just a conductor. Don't worry about the colors. As long as you got the right gauge, the right gauge wire, it's just a path for the electric to travel through. And we're coming back on the black, and it's gonna go out to those lights and then still be protected by the fuse. Make sure your crimps are tight and just take a little torch or a lighter and melt up that heat shrink. And this will just help keep those connections tight because no matter what, like I said, you get water in your hole. So there's our connection. So now we just got to plug it into the battery and go test it out. So there's the switch. One thing I'm going to do with the switch once I get this all set is I'm going to silicone behind the switch because this switch technically is made for, you know, inside the vehicle use. So hopefully it holds out in the elements when I'm out in the rain or whatever. If it does, we'll have to, you know, if it doesn't, we'll have to change this switch. But we're going to run some silicone behind this switch to give it a watertight seal. And one good thing about these plastic plates from New Canoe, if you screw up, you can order some more and replace these down the line. You know, maybe it's a good thing just to get a couple extra ones when you get the kayak so you have them in case you do screw up and you're in the middle of a process of something, you have that plate with you right away. But literally, hit the switch, and they come on. Very, very sharp. And these can be seen from miles away. Last but not least, you can see everything in here is made up. It's uh, pretty, pretty what watertight. We'll probably just tape up all the fittings just to make sure to keep some of the water out because even you can see a little bit of water drops in there from the last time I was out saltwater fishing, taking some pretty significant waves over the uh, bow of the boat. So some water did get in the hull, not a lot, but we're just gonna tape all these things up and to hold this battery off the ground so it's not sitting in any water is I had the old Burley Pro hatch. This is made for the Hobie and I just basically butchered it and cut it and made it small enough that this battery can just go in here and it sits on the lip uh, i may just get a piece of plastic and make this a little bit nicer but for now this is what we're doing it just kind of holds it on the lips here on the inside and once it's there it doesn't move because once the hatch is on top of it it holds it so if this thing's bouncing around you know that's going to stay put and tighten down that hatch and leave that battery there when i'm out in the water and all i got to do once again is just come up hit the switch and turn my lights on and off Simple as that, guys. So I hope you like this version of the install that I did for my own boat. Everything from Yak Power, plug and play. You don't have to do any splicing to it or nothing. You can just literally plug and play everything and give yourself a battery source. They have all different pigtails for different batteries. It's pretty cool that they actually had one for the knuckle because that's pretty much all I run on my boat. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions for the electric part of this at all. That's what I do for a living. So this is pretty cut and dry for us. Do not hesitate. Just drop a comment. You can reach out to me on any of my social platforms and I'll get back with you if you have any you know questions and I'll answer those things up right away. That's about it, guys. So as always, I appreciate every one of you. Be safe on the water and I'll catch you on the water. See you soon.